So the issue of Barossa and the number I am going to cover my campaign number. We, we heard about the uh, the former teachers council member who resigned and he happened to be the former prime minister of Barossa and he resigned because he didn't like what the president said or, or spoke about the uh, the Barossa and so thereafter we saw uh, Dr. Fred Membe he went to Wapula engaged the Mwata Kazembe and prom made some promises to the Mwata Kazembe. Now today he was live, he had a, a press briefing or a press conference if you'd like and uh, he talked about some of these things, he talked about traditional leaders and his main focus was on the Balotse land and of course he did talk about other uh, traditional leaders but uh, his main focus was on the Balotse land and he made some suggestions uh, of what the, the Socialist Party is going to do concerning the issue of Balotse land when they, when they are elected into office. So let's just take a quick look at his uh, uh, press briefing. Much of it is corrupting him absolutely. What is the solution for the issue of Balozand? We have stated clearly that to us at the Socialist Party, that's not a problem. There is no problem there. Because that problem can easily, easily be resolved. And the only way to resolve that problem is to democratize the governance of this country fully. We have been on this path, on this type of governance for close to 60 years now. And clearly this system of governance has failed our country. It has failed our people. It can't continue. It's breeding divisions. It's breeding ty tyranny. It's breeding dictatorship. It can't continue. It has failed to deepen democracy. It has failed to allow our people to govern themselves in the way they deem fit. That's why you are seeing issues of Barroso and come. They are coming as a result of frustration, as a result of a failed political system, a failed political order, a political order that has failed to democratize itself deeply. Before we saw Kwisamuno, Bantubesu, Vale Iteka. Vale Iteka, Nemfu Mushabu. Vale Iteka with the spiritual leaders. Bamuisa, at least Vale Tushila Kutumakotu Nono. Don't forget that until the early 50s, there were no politicians in this territory. There was not a single politician. The politicians started to govern this, uh, this country. First, the colonial politicians in the 50s, or earlier than that. And we started to govern ourselves as politicians in 1964. But the governance of these territories did not start in Abamwisa or independence, no. We governed ourselves before we are subjugated through our traditional leadership. Today, that traditional leadership is excluded from governance. Today, the spiritual leaders are excluded from governance. Only the politician is governing. Only one man in the state house is making all the decisions for everybody. Is he capable? No. None of us is capable of governing the country well in that, in that, in that, in that manner. We don't have the capacity. Power must be shared with others. The politician has to share power with others. Power has to be shared with the traditional leadership and the religious leadership in this country. These are authentic leaders of our people. They cannot be ignored. You don't need to go to church to realize that there are religious leaders in this country. You don't need to belong to a tribe or an ethnicity to realize that there is traditional leadership in this country that is still needed. Or well, that is still there. And that which you can't wipe out. They have weakened it. They have brought it down. But it's still there. It's not out. We need to start on a new path. We need to bring in a new type of governance. We need to localize governance. From the district. Or even from the village. All the way up. Even in countries where we copy things like England. England is not, or the UK is not governed by politicians alone. No. The traditional leadership there, what we call the traditional leadership there, the monarchy there, is the head of state. You have the Church of England. It's part of the state apparatus. You have the House of Lords, unelected, part of the state apparatus. You have the House of Commons, the Westminster. 
where politicians are headed by the prime minister. That's how that country is governed. Japan, where we get our cars, the head of state is the monarch, the emperor. Then you have the, the prime minister heading government. And you have the religious leaders, the Buddhist leaders and others participating in the governance of that country. So is Spain. So is Denmark. So is Sweden. So is Norway and so on and so forth. The politician alone will not be able to govern this country and get us out of the poverty our people are enduring today. You don't need to be a traditionalist or a highly religious person to realize that this need. People participate through their leaders. And in our case, the leaders of our people are the religious leaders, the traditional leaders, and the political leaders. No one group should monopolize that power. Even Iran, Iran is governed by both religious leaders and politicians. And they have made progress. <coughs> Despite heavy sanctions, look at what Iran has been able to achieve. I'm not saying their system is perfect, but it's working for them in some way. Let's find a system that works for us. The Socialist Party in the government will localize power. The districts, the political heads of the districts, will be the most senior chiefs in that district, selected by the traditional system. Yes, there will be elected people in that district. The councillors will be elected, but part of the councillors also will be selected from the religious leaders and the traditional leaders and other civic leaders, including those from business, to run the district. They will run education, they will run health, they will run agriculture and so on in their districts. Even the mining licenses, they will issue them in their districts. They will not be issued from Lusaka, from State House. They will issue the mining licenses. If they don't have the capacity, they will hire people to advise them. And if they get, say, $100 million loyalties, they will surrender maybe $50 million to Lusaka, the national government. $50 million will be spent in their district. Probably $10 million of that will go to the royal establishments in the district to pay village headmen and their secretaries, to pay sub-chiefs and so on. And also invest some of that money to develop their culture, their languages, and to train their leaders. Ten million will go to the provincial administration of the province. The 30 million will go into the coffers or the budget of the district, in addition to what they will receive from the central government or the national government in Lusaka. People have to participate in the governance of their communities. From each district, we will have two or so going to the provincial council, which will be headed by the most senior chief in the province. If it's the case of Barozland, it will be the Ritunga or the Ngambela himself. We will do away with the provincial minister. The Ngambela or the Ritunga himself will run the province as provincial minister. They will not be called provincial minister, they will decide what they are called. But the responsibilities, the benefits that were going to the provincial minister will go either to the Ngambela or to the Ritunga directly. There will be no DCs running districts. The most senior chiefs will become the, the, the political heads of each district. On top of the provincial leadership, we will have the national, the national council, chaired by the president, maybe with the two or so from each province deciding on how our country should move forward together. Each province will be required to have its own bank. There will be a bank of Barozland. All the money that comes from Lusaka and from other taxes that they collect and so on will go into the bank of Barozland, which will have a branch in every district, run by the people of Barozland itself. The ownership of that bank will be private, parastatal, Local, 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 local governments can invest in them, the royal establishments can invest in it, private individuals can invest in it. The money that goes into that bank will be lent to the local businessmen to run their businesses. They need capital. Fertilizer, oil will be procured locally. The tenders will be given in Chipata for, for Eastern Province Fertilizer to the local businessmen there. 
using their bank, if they call it Bank Yakumawa, whatever, will give them the loans. If it doesn't have enough money, it will refinance. The money that is collected from those tenders will be banked in Chipata. So that the local people in Chipata, in Eastern Province, can borrow that money and run their businesses. Within two to three years, we should be able to have millionaires, Kumawa, millionaires in Barozland, millionaires Kulubemba, millionaires in Northwestern, and so on. Look, we have been mining since the early 20s on the copper belt. What have our Lamba people benefited from that? Look at the poverty within the Lamba people. They have lost their culture. They have lost their land. Their, live, their rivers, streams have been polluted. What, did we, what have they gotten in return? A new system is required to help them benefit from what God has given them. And to do that, there has to be a revolutionary change. The details of how this will run out can take us the whole day. I've just given you an indication of where we are heading. These matters, we have been discussing them with our religious leaders. We have been discussing them with our traditional leaders and other civic leaders. We are confident that if we go this path, the issue of Barosland will fade away. What we are offering is bigger than what is contained in the Barosa Agreement. That's why when we say the Barosa Agreement is too little to what is needed, this is what we mean. We will give our people more power to govern their areas, their districts, their provinces. Even in a village, you can have the best village headman, but each household runs its own. You will not allow that village headman to come into your house and you start making rules. You have your own rules in your home. <coughs> Not even your father or your mother is allowed to run your home. You run it yourself. So let each unit of our country be run by its people for the benefit of their people in the way they deem fit. Of course, there are minimum requirements that will be put in place. <coughs> we can't continue to be governed this way. There's serious contempt for the people. The leadership we have today does not seem to trust the people. They don't seem to have faith in the people. They don't seem to have respect for the people. But what they are forgetting is that people can only be loyal to those who are loyal to them. People can only respect those who respect them. People can only have trust in those who trust them. A leadership that is running away from his people, a leadership that is scared of his people, cannot be a leadership that can sustain a nation for long. It is very clear to us that Mr. Hichilema has failed to govern this country. And those who have failed, they are substituted. There has to be a substitution. And the issue of Balozland has exposed his shallowness. And to a certain extent, he's dishonest. He lied to them. But he lied to people who have been lied to for too long. And they can't take any more. Their marginal propensity for them to receive a lie has diminished. They can't take more lies. People need to be told the truth. People are, some people are saying it's difficult to replace Mr. Kainde. Yes, it is difficult to replace him with another liar better than him. <laughs> but it's not difficult to replace a lie with the truth. If we are looking for a liar better than Mr. Kainde, it will be difficult for us to find one. <laughs> but if we are looking for an honest person, it's much easier. It's much easier. What is it that Mr. Kainde has done over the last two and a half years of his government? That is difficult for anybody to do. Yes, it's difficult to lie in the way he has lied for us. But to do truthful work won't be that difficult. And we are not putting ourselves here as MacGyvers, as he was trying to do Mr. Kainde himself, claiming he was a fixer. But he will fix it. Us, we are not claiming that. 
Ababe mba batila infu mshitungu lafie Aba take aba chite fintu Wantu On my own here I don't have the capacity Intellectual and otherwise To solve all this problem by myself Kanunga tuwabike emi tuwepamu No kubombila pamu Not one person It won't happen We have many challenges We have many difficulties And these difficulties Will not go away so easily these challenges will not disappear easily. They need a concerted effort. They need cooperation of all. They need to be acknowledged and tackled together. Without cooperating, without coming together to deal with these problems, no MacGyver, nobody will fix it, will give us the solutions that we need to live a happier, and a better life. Thank you very much. So basically, Dr. Fred Membe was suggesting or he was saying that the entire government structure needs to be restructured. And um, personally, I feel like traditional leaders have been, have been benefiting from the government. You know, starting from uh, the late Michael Shufia Sata's time, we saw since that time that uh, traditional leaders uh, were uh, given good accommodation like the government started building palaces for them uh, they, they were even put on payrolls I, f I feel traditional leaders are very much respected by the government so i just don't get it why some traditional leaders still feel like they are not you know uh, is respected enough by the government because as far as i'm concerned most of them are on payroll the, the government has given them para, uh, palaces and we also know that uh, it, when it comes to uh, developing or maybe starting something in those uh, chiefdoms, the government cannot just go ahead without, you know, engaging the most of the activities or the development uh, um, uh, projects. The, the traditional leaders are usually involved and engaged. They are usually the ones even allocating land and all that. Whenever you know investors have, have come to to Zambia, when they want to invest, maybe to start maybe projects in Wapula or whatever, the, the traditional leaders are always engaged. So I don't just understand why traditional leaders, certain not all of them, why most traditional leaders feel like they are not respected enough by the government. So anyway, let me know what, what you think about Dr. Fred Membe's uh, press briefing and the suggestions in general. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do well to subscribe and leave a like for the algorithm.